Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. In this Hanya focused video, I'll be trying to explain the confusing parts of her kit, an ultimate turn extension tech, and a couple of showcases of what an idle on zero Hanya can do. So let's talk about Hanya's skill, which is admittingly quite confusing. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some tricks with it in order to better understand what exactly is going on with her skill. But basically when Hanya uses her skill, she will apply burden to an enemy. And when you hit this enemy with two basic attacks, two skills, or two ultimates, then you will immediately generate one skill point. You can generate two skill points like this. So if you spend one skill point to use her skill, at maximum you can get refunded two skill points for a total of plus one skill point by the end of her skill. It's also worth noting that this ability is not affected by effect hit rate, so you can effectively run zero effect hit rate on your Hanya and you will always apply burden to the enemy when you use her skill. Okay, so we're gonna open up this fight with her technique, which will apply burden onto one enemy at random. And what's interesting about this burden is that this one is at zero out of four. And this is the only way to actually get burden on the enemy at zero out of four is by opening up a fight with Hanya's technique. So if we do attack this enemy, we will see that half of the circle is highlighted. We're gonna need one more attack in order to do, fulfill the requirement of two basics, two skills, or two ultimates hitting the enemy in order to generate that extra skill point. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Now we can see that the enemy is at one out of four in terms of the hits on the enemy or burden state is what I'm gonna call it because I'm not sure what else to call it. We're gonna hit the enemy and this will actually generate an extra skill point as well as increase the enemy's burden state to two out of four. There's also this visual indicator next to Hanya's portrait. This indicates how many skill points you can generate from hitting the enemy twice. And if we hit it again, it's gonna be at three out of four. And finally, I'm not gonna use Argenti's attack on it because it's gonna kill it. Finally, if we use another basic attack or skill or ultimate to hit the enemy, it will be at four out of four, at which point we've generated two skill points from all this and burden will then be removed from the enemy. So that stuff was pretty intuitive, but the next part is a bit more confusing. We're gonna use her skill on an enemy that does not have burden on them. As we can see, the Void Ranger doesn't have it. When we use it, we will end up seeing that, oh dear, okay, yeah, the no, Lord is gonna heal her. <laughs> and we're gonna see that the enemy is actually at one out of four burdens. So unlike her technique, which puts an enemy at zero out of four, using her skill on an enemy will actually start the enemy off at one out of four burden on the enemy. So what does this mean if you use her skill on an enemy that already has burden on them? This is where it gets confusing is when you use her skill when the enemy is already in a burdened state. So right now it is at one out of four. So you would expect it to still be at two out of two burden skill point generating things available. But when we use her skill, it actually brings the enemy to the two out of four state. As we can see here, one dot is missing from Hanya's burden indicator and the enemy doesn't have any hits on it. So that means that it is at two out of four current burden state. Um, That's confusing, but once you kind of understand a bit better as to how burden is applied, it will make more sense. So here's another example. The enemy is currently at three out of four burdens. As we can see, the next hit will bring it up to four out of four and you know, she's missing one skill point. That's how we know it is at three out of four. So what happens if we use a skill point here? It is going to bring us back to two out of four in terms of the burden state, as we can see there. So what exactly is going on here? First is burden is first applied to the enemy. However, the burden state is kept and then the hit is registered. So that's why we're seeing that we actually gain an extra skill point from using her skill on an enemy at one out of four or three out of four burden states. So I do have this chart for you guys to see um, exactly how the burden states are affected by all this. Now, really the most important takeaway from this though is just one main thing. And it's that it is not skill point efficient to use Hanya's skill on an enemy that already has burden on them. However, it is worth keeping in mind 
that there are many reasons to just spam her skill. And that is because with, for example, the S5 cogs, and if Hanya doesn't get hit, you will be able to get her ultimate up every three turns, which will allow you to keep essentially 100% uptime on her ultimate on one of her allies. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I know that this burden stack thing is confusing, but the general takeaway should be helpful. Now there is one more important tech slash trick that you should definitely utilize with Hanya, and it is essentially an ultimate buff turn extension for whoever you use her ultimate on. So first we're going to start off by using her ultimate now. Now currently it is not Argenti's turn, so we're going to see what happens. We use her ultimate on Argenti, and up next will be his turn. If we look at his buffs now, we can see Edict right here has two turns remaining, and we're just going to use his skill real quick, take a hit or two, and now if we look at Argenti, we can see here that he is at one turn remaining for Hanya's ultimate buff. So we're just going to go ahead and go through this, and we will see that right after Argenti's next attack, which will happen anytime now, he is going to run out of Hanya's buff. So right here, we can see that he no longer has Hanya's buff in two attacks. So we're going to just basically do the exact same thing, just with one little difference. Now it is Argenti's turn, instead of it not being Argenti's turn yet. Last time it was Fushuan's turn. So now that it is Argenti's turn, we're going to use the ultimate on him. And we will see here that after he uses his skill, last time his buff counter went down by one turn. However, now we can see that there are still two turns remaining for him. So this effectively turned into a three turn buff. And we're just going to go ahead. We can see here that after we use Argenti's skill again, slash his, you know, it being Argenti's turn, we have one turn remaining. So we've done two attacks while buffed with Hanya's ultimate with Argenti. Right here, this is going to be the third attack where he actually has the Edict buff in comparison to the previous example where he only had the Edict buff for two attacks. Now he has the Edict buff for three attacks, all because we used Hanya's ultimate while it was Argenti's turn. A couple of showcases of Hanya being an absolute beast, even at Eidolon Zero. And for this example, I'm going to be running her with an Argenti team. And this is going to be a zero cycle run with Hanya. And she's actually, you know, just an extremely good support character because the speed that she provides is absolutely invaluable in Memory of Chaos. And it actually allows you to get away with running attack boots on your in Argenti in this case. With the buff from uh, Hanya's talent and stuff, Argenti's super noob just basically almost completely wiped out the wave. And this allows us to fill up some resources for the rest of our team. You can see that I did some crossfade editing just so, you know, speeding through uh, me thinking about it because, you know, we don't really need to see the creaky hamsters in my head spinning the wheel as I think about what moves to make next. But anyway, we have our entire team's um, ultimates all available to us, which means it is time to super buff Argenti and we're going to see just what kind of punishment he can dish out to the enemies here. And let me just say I am quite impressed with his performance here. Anyway, um, Hanya is just going to do her thing. And yeah, it just goes to demonstrate just how useful of a general support character Hanya is for pretty much any attack scaling character. And just to further demonstrate another showcase of Eidolon Zero Hanya, here we have a Dan Hung Imbibitor Lune Zero Cycle run that I did with her. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, obviously with Dan Hung, she is an incredible teammate for him because 
He pretty much can generate one skill point every single turn that she goes. And overall, in some way, she is better than Pella thanks to the speed boost. Although, you know, it's situational as to obviously which character is going to be better. But here, you know, I, I guess I'm just uh, processing and thinking about what to do. Um, and what was actually really cool about this was that it took very few attempts to have Dan Hung and Bible Lune zero cycle this with this team. Because, well, you know, Dan Hung is still just one of the best characters in the game. That's no surprise. I believe here I'm actually running a speed boots with him. We can see here that Hanya is next going to use her ultimate on Dan Hung and Bible Lune. And we can also see here that I am utilizing the trick where we do the turn extension for Dan Hung's speed buff which I'm not really sure how much that ends up mattering in this specific run because either way, the bottleneck for Dan Hung's turns actually becomes Branya's skill here. In that sense, the speed buff is not as relevant as in comparison to the previous Argenti run because with Argenti, I had attack boots and Hanya's speed buff actually allowed, you know, Argenti to go in extra time. Actually, thinking about it, I'm not even sure that Hanya's speed buff even mattered in the previous run. I'd have to go back and actually look at it. Yeah, I mean, Hanya's just doing her thing. Now, unfortunately, we did only get one ultimate with Hanya, but she's already done her thing. She's provided this team with plenty of skill points, plenty of bonus damage, a couple turns of, you know, a lot of bonus attack as well. And of course, we have Branya just doing her thing. And finally, Dan Hung and Barbara Lune with the support of these three characters is able to very somewhat comfortably uh, zero cycle the memory of chaos and as you can tell i think hanya is an incredible harmony character and she is going to be another great four star harmony character and in my opinion, she feels much more universal than even some Harmony characters like Asta, for example, because Hanya just provides bonus damage, attack percent, and speed, all of which pretty much any attack scaling DPS character can utilize to the fullest. So personally, if it were me, I would actually go for a copy of Hanya, but hopefully not at the risk of potentially, you know, losing your 50-50 or getting a five-star character in the process. So that is up for you to decide, but also getting Argenti is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Argenti, as you can see, is clearly a great DPS character. So yeah. All right, that's basically the main things I want to share about Hanya. And personally, I think that the assets that she provides to Honkai Star Rail are second to none. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.